This is Jerry Mischewski with Bounds Community Slackline Outfitters here in the BC shop. Today we're going to be looking at tying your tails off on the Alpine Weblock 4.0. Why it's important, how to do it with different rigging scenarios, and optimal practices for tail, tail tie-offs in general. So let's jump right into it. All right, so uh, before we jump into how to actually tie your webbing tail off um, on your Weblock 4.0, I wanna go into a few of the reasons why that's important. Um, so in the past few years, there have been a number of studies done uh, on the dynamics of, of high lines that uh, under normal use, uh, no matter what type of Weblock you're using that's currently available, or how you install the webbing, be it single, 1.5, or double wrap, the, the webbing will slip gradually over time. And also, um, uh, what can occur is called tail walking, where the, the tail of the line actually works its way up underneath, or out from underneath the, the loaded strand here, eventually leading to a complete weblock failure. And this happens after each dynamic event uh, on, on a slack line or high line, especially those un with low amounts of tension on them. Um, so why is this happening? Why are web locks slipping? Well, recently there was a study done by the ISA, International Slack Line Association, that showed uh, the mechanism behind this slippage in web locks. Basically what's happening is when first the slack line is loaded and then unloaded in a rapid fashion, the stre there's a minute amount of stretch inside the weblock of the webbing. And when it's stretching back, i.e. being unloaded, it's grabbing onto the tail of the weblock and sucking it into the device, imparting a small amount of slippage with each dynamic event. So if you can imagine on a normal high line where you're taking leash falls, catching, bouncing, surfing, all sorts of dynamic movements, that line is flexing up and down. And when it's flexing up, the webbing is stretching back into the device, pulling that tail back into it as well, which is pretty dangerous because that slipping, it doesn't stop. Uh, it, it will continue to slip all the way to the end of the line or until it catches on your webbing tail tie-off, which we're gonna show you uh, how to do. Um, so there, a webbing tail tie-off is a little bit more complicated than just simply tying a knot in the tail and clipping it to something. Because we know from these tests that our webbing is going to slip 100% guaranteed, no matter how you're rigging with your weblock. And so if you just clip it to, say, a single bolt off to the side or something, that strand is going to get loaded, and that bolt is going to get loaded also. And so it, there's a few things to consider when choosing a tie-off method. So the first of which is um, the, the, the knot that you tie, the tail tie-off, it should sit well under tension because we know it's going to get tensioned. So it needs to sit nicely um, when it's tight. The second criterion that's important to consider uh, for your weblock tie-off is that the knot that you tie is releasable when taut. Um, because again, we know it's going to get tensioned, uh, and so if it's not releasable while it's tight, then derigging becomes complicated. Sometimes to the point where you almost have to cut the line, which we all know is very bad. Um, uh, the third criterion is your weblock slippage tie-off should not interfere with any of the rigging in front or um, in front or behind. Uh, the tie-off itself. For instance, if you're using the tail, the rest of the tail of the webbing to build a backup anchor or do some slippage prevention or uh, extension prevention in your anchor, uh, you don't want to have to interfere with that with your weblock tie-off. Um, so just it needs to be an independent component in your anchor or in your system, rather, uh, the, the weblock slippage tie-off should be able to be done and undone without interfering with anything else in the system. The fourth criterion is that your knot needs to be inspectable. It needs to be easily seen what's going on because oftentimes, in fact most of the time, when we're highlining or slacklining, we're not alone. And it's important to know, uh, for the others to know what's happening 
with this extremely critical part of the rig. Um, and so making it inspectable will help both you and your highlining buddies. Um, the fifth criterion is it shouldn't compromise any part of the rig, your tie-off. For instance, as we mentioned before, we've seen a few, a few times uh, web block slippage tie-offs going to, back to a single bolt. So we know that's going to get loaded. And if that strand becomes loaded, that becomes our primary point of contact for the line. Our, the rest of our anchor is then compromised because now we're going to that single point where the line has been tensioned to the web lock and then going to the other anchor. And so a best practice tells you that you should avoid singular points for your web lock slippage tie-off and instead go to your master point, the connector, or better, the web lock itself. And the sixth, the sixth criterion is the, the tie-off needs to be able to be tied tightly. You don't want any slack going from the tail exit to your webbing slippage tie-off because, again, that's going to slip. This web lock's going to slip. So any slack that you leave between the tie-off and the web lock itself, that's going to get sucked through the web lock, and that tail walking can occur with just a few inches or centimeters of slack between the tie-off and the web lock. So it's best to get it real tight in there, sucked up all the way, so that that is for sure not going to happen. And the seventh criterion is one that I like to add, non-critical, but uh, makes rigging and handling of your line much easier, is to leave enough slack in your slippage tie-off alone uh, to be able to retension or change the tension of your line. So I typically leave about two meters in the tie-off itself so that I can undo the tie-off if I need to add or remove tension from the line and not interfere with anything else in the anchor. Uh, it just makes things super easy, super smooth. Um, yeah, that pretty much covers the criterion. Let's jump into how to actually tie a web block slippage tie-off. This following method I'm going to show you meets all of those and it sits really nice on the WebLock 4.0 and it works in any configuration that you would like to rig the WebLock with. Um, so first I'm going to take a bite of webbing in the tail, again leaving about two meters of slack so that I know I can undo it and retension my line if I need to and pass it up through the back of the device, just like so. Pull it in so that the tail is sucked up all the way into the device, just like that. And then, I'm going to wrap, we're going to take the bite and pass it through the anchor hole, just like that. making sure there's no twists or anything, keeping it taut. And I like to keep my finger in there just to make this next part super easy. I'm going to pass this strand through around like this, crossing over the previous strand. And then I'm going to form a bite here and I'll make a four layers of webbing there and pass that through where my finger is situated. Just like that. Cinch it up real nice and tight. And then, this is the most basic way to do this. You can just take the, the extra bite here and pass it through that loop that you passed through. Just like that. And cinch it up. Just by pulling this strand through and sucking that in. It's basically a slip knot. Super easy to do. And this is going to leave a big old tail. And so another way to do that is you could do um, a nice daisy chain method. So instead of taking this tail and passing it through, you could do another one of those bites and pass that through there. Sucking it in there, sucking that in. And then you could do another one. Sucking that in, sucking that in and then finally pass that tail through. 
and that leaves way less of way less of a tail there. Um, and you can also just take a beaner and clip this to the shackle or your master point in your anchor. Uh, so there it is. That's the, the gist of the tie-off. As you can see, it's pretty taut here. This is the tail of the, of the webbing being sucked into there. So as soon as this starts to slip, that's going to get loaded, preventing any sort of tail walk or complete webbing failure. Um, and then again, to undo it, once it is taut, we just pull that one out, and these just pop out one after another. Even if it's under a lot of tension, that's totally possible to do. And you just pull it out there, and bam, voila, we are good to go. So uh, yeah, that covers the, the webbing slippage tie-off. Uh, for more in-depth information about the issue of webbing slippage, please read the article below. We provide uh, the, the data from the previous tests done by International Slackline Association and a few individuals, uh, as well as a few other simple guidelines for webbing slippage tie-offs. Um, again, my name is Jerry Mischewski with Balance Community. Thanks for watching.